The Los Angeles Dodgers are 2024 World Series champions. It has been a whirlwind of a few days and really a whirlwind of a month for me in the month of October. The Dodgers going on a deep run this October in 2024 and I would take this every single year. This is what I want every single year. This is what I expect every single season from the Los Angeles Dodgers. We expect greatness from this team. We expect championship baseball year in year out from this team. We expect World Series every single season. There's so much to talk about in this video. Um, you know, viewers of my channel that have been here uh, for years past, uh, I began this channel in 2020 and the Dodgers won the World Series in 2020. And uh, many of you guys didn't see my videos then. It was just kind of a oasis back then uh, of my channel. But here we are four years later and we're once again World Series champions. And not only are we World Series champions, we have won the World Series in a full season, 162 games complete, and the Dodgers came out on top as the best team in baseball, as they were the best team in baseball in the regular season, which they have done many times over in years past. I never felt like this team was going to win the World Series. Uh, let's just say back in a uh, you know, random date in June, I couldn't tell you that this team was winning the World Series. And even go, going back to a couple months ago, I still didn't feel like this team was capable of winning a World Series. And I think the players kind of felt that way too. Not saying they didn't believe in themselves back in June or August or whatever the case is, but Mookie Betts said himself, like there wasn't a belief until after Tyler Glasnow got hurt. That kind of galvanized the team. And when Glasnow went out, I'm like, man, that really hurts us. How are we going to get through October without Glasnow? Clearly they rallied together. This was a special group. And I have Crow to eat. I have Crow to eat. Uh, today in this video and uh, I'll be the first to admit it. I have crow to eat and I'm glad to have crow to eat because I said a couple years back when the Dodgers lost to the Padres in my NLDS exit video would never win the World Series again with Dave Roberts under the helm. I said it. So uh, I'm so glad to be wrong uh, about Dave Roberts and the Dodgers uh, because they actually won a World Series a couple years later and Dave Roberts I, I just I have to say my cap. I have to say my cap to Dave Roberts. Um, whether it was him or the front office that came together and, and found a winning philosophy, everything just went the Dodgers' way. Whatever the case is, the Dodgers and Dave Roberts got it done this season in 2024. So I tip my cap to Dave Roberts. Um, Dave Roberts, he is going to eventually pass Tommy Lasorda. No other Tommy Lasorda, obviously, but. Uh, Dave Roberts will eventually become the new modern day Tom Lasorda, okay? Uh, he'll become the new modern day Tom Lasorda. Tom Lasorda was a manager of the Dodgers for like 20 years. And Dave Roberts already has a decade under his belt and a couple of uh, World Series championships. So I think Dave Roberts will be here another decade. He'll be here another decade, probably throughout the Shohei tenure. Joey Otani said nine more of these things. Let's get nine more of these things. Hours after the parade. Uh, I went to the parade today, so... That was super awesome. Uh, I waited a long time for that parade. We didn't get it in 2020. And so we finally got it today in 2024. Um, I got some bits and clips from that. Uh, nothing crazy, but uh, I will be posting that. I'll be posting so much more uh, throughout the off season, especially when it comes to the Dodgers uh, and the 2024 team, covering this team as, as I do and I did uh, and I have my whole life. Um, I'll definitely be celebrating this throughout the entire offseason because this is super special. I've always wondered what it felt like to win a World Series in a full season because I've seen every other team do it every other single year uh, that I've been around. Uh, the Dodgers only had that one 60-game season in 2020. There's been no other short seasons uh, as long as I've been around. And I, just, I was just jealous. Like, man, like I want the Dodgers to be on the mountaintop after March to October of 162 games. Like I want that feeling. I want to go through, I want to go through that grind all year long from February to October to November. So we're, we're in November. I want to feel that grind and the Dodgers. And I certainly have felt that grind as we have reached uh, the end here. Um, I, I'm just super happy the Dodgers got it done. As I said, this season began all the way back in, February and the Dodgers for the first team began play uh, against the Padres overseas. I was up at 3 a.m. and that began way back then. Comment down below. Did you watch the games in South Korea? Did you wake up at 3 a.m. Uh, West Coast time at least? 
uh, wherever the case is, I, I did, and it's just part of being a fan. It's part of being a diehard fan the way I am, and um, it, it just means so much to me. I, I've been to over 170 Dodger games in my lifetime, and I am a part of the team. Like, we all are part of the team. All of us fans are part of the team. We give our hard-earned money every single season to this team because we love them. Like, we love Dodger baseball, and the Dodgers are the soul of the city. We have a winning team. We have a winning organization every single year that goes out and signs the best players, like a Shohei Otani that we signed this past offseason. Shohei Otani was the game changer, and I talked about it going to the postseason. They were my pick to win the World Series. The Dodgers were because nobody was picking us. And years past, people had picked us because the Dodgers were, you know, the big and bad Dodgers. But nobody picked us this year because of our, our past postseason failures. The Padres were so good, which they were. But I said, no, that this Dodger team is special. I, I felt it uh, at the last week of the season against the Padres. This team can hang with the Padres, and I know this team can hang with anybody. So that was when I knew that this Dodger team was special and had a chance to go and do something special, and they did. Although he didn't do much in the World Series, Shohei Otani all season long was amazing. In his first season in Dodger Blue, he achieved 50-50 that we have never seen before um, by anybody. And so Shohei Otani in his first season with the Dodgers achieves 50-50. Super amazing to be a part of that and watch that. And, and, and going into the postseason, we knew that Otani, Betts, Freeman, Teoscar, and, and so on and so forth. This Dodger lineup was insane. Like It was literally a Diamond Dynasty team. The Dodgers were running out there, and, and this lineup and team will be remembered for a long time because they were so good. And it's gonna be interesting how the Dodgers, you know, uh, you know, retool next season uh, to kind of go back to back, uh, which I definitely want to do because no team has done it for a very long time. So I want to be that team to uh, set the tone and go back to back again. So looking forward to going back to back, but gonna soak this one in and show Tony uh, did a lot for us. He's going to be pitching next year. Super awesome stuff from Show Tony. Uh, he's going to win the National League MVP. He was amazing with the Dodgers. I'm so glad he is a Los Angeles Dodger. And, and he's out of that hellhole in Anaheim. And he's on a winning team. And, and he's happy here in LA. And uh, the fans love him. And um, Dodger fans definitely deserve him. Uh, we deserve him. And so we're going to take very good care of him. And uh, he'll be remembered for a Dodger for a very long time. So Show Tony was a game changer for the Dodgers. I think lifted the Dodgers over the top. Um, this postseason I, I really do so I talked about it going in he was the game changer uh in this postseason Freddie Freeman let's talk about the MVP of the World Series Freddie Freeman Freddie Freeman was super awesome uh Freddie Freeman signed three years ago in 22 and when, when the Dodgers signed Freddie Freeman I'm like wow like Freddie Freeman is a Dodger one of the best hitters in, in baseball and he plays an amazing first base and to see that you know every single day uh, which obviously I knew he was a great player in Atlanta, but to see it day in and day out, just how good of a player he is and how he goes about his craft and just how good of a person he is. Like there's no better, you know, person uh, to lead this Dodger team, to be an advocate for this Dodger team than Freddie Freeman. Uh, you need those guys. And so I see fans like that hate the Dodgers. Obviously, you know, most people hate the Dodgers, but they can't hate Freddie Freeman. And so Freddie Freeman is just a phenomenal baseball player. And uh, the World Series MVP for the Dodgers, he went through so much this season. Um, had a down season by you know his terms. Uh, it was still a great season, but by his terms, it was a down season. World Series MVP, and that game one home run, uh, that walk off grand slam by Freddie Freeman, it's gonna go down in Dodger history. I, I called it in my podcast. Go check it out. Links in the description. Uh, Dodgers that are same as my YouTube, which is where I got my YouTube name. It's for my podcast, which I started a couple years ago. Um, Freddie Freeman, I, I, talk, I talked about it. I said he is our modern day Kirk Gibson. For, so for the Dodger fans that didn't see Kirk Gibson in 88, he is literally our modern day Kirk Gibson uh, moments with the walk off home run of the World Series. Uh, I'm so glad the Dodgers have these amazing moments in the World Series because uh, it's super awesome. So I, I would love to keep having them. Um, so Freeman, our modern day Kirk Gibson, uh, probably the best Dodger moment I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of great ones. I've been a part of a lot of great ones. Uh, that was, like, it's hard to top a World Series Grand Slam. A walk-off World Series Grand Slam. You, you just can't top it. So that was amazing. And that catapulted the series for the Dodgers' way. And Freddie Freeman was amazing throughout the uh, World Series. Six consecutive games at a home run in the World Series. Just an amazing player. Freddie Freeman, 
pop it up for Brady Freeman. Second base, Gavin Lux was on and off this this entire season. Uh, Gavin Lux, we go back to spring training. Gavin Lux was supposed to be the starting shortstop for the Dodgers, and so yes, Gavin Lux was going to be the shortstop for LA. But he was making air after air after air, and it was panic time. If you're a Dodger fan, you'd be like panicking, like, "Oh my gosh, like, what is Gavin Lux doing? Is he okay? Like, he has the yips, whatever the case is. He can't play short." He went over to second in spring training, was making errors even there. But when we come to the regular season, the guy looks flawless at second base. So I don't know what's up with that, but uh, Gavin Lux uh, transitioned from transition from shortstop to second base uh, at the beginning of the year and was our full-time second baseman and Gavin Lux is good at second base. Uh, he's, he's a perfect second baseman. Um, he was not very good in the first half of the season, hit under like 200 or, or around there uh, for the first half of the season. And Gavin Lux was coming off of a ACL tear from the previous year. And so I was hoping for a breakout season for Gavin Lux. Gavin Lux eventually though turned it on after the all-star break, he went on a red hot tear, kind of cooled off again, but Gavin Lux, uh, definitely a great player. So I'm happy Gavin Lux is the Dodger and hopefully gets better next year and stays more consistent in 2025. Shortstop, uh, Mookie Betts played shortstop. Mookie Betts took over for Gavin Lux at shortstop to begin the year, which was a crazy time if you're a Dodger fan. I'm glad Mookie Betts is not playing shortstop anymore. It did not finish the season at shortstop. Miguel Rojas played majority of the shortstop. Uh, we saw a bunch of guys in there, Kike, Taylor, maybe a couple games. Um, Edmund, you know, when we got Edmund. Uh, so, Miguel Rojas, um, solid, guy, solid guy. He came up as a Dodger and so caps it off with the World Series. I think he's coming back for next season, but Miguel Rojas, uh, as smooth as they come, and he was really good with the bat this season as well. Third base, Max Muncy. Max Muncy was pretty good this season, uh, and Max Muncy, I really had to criticize a lot on his defensive side, uh, but he worked on his defense a lot, and, and I give him credit for that because he was really bad and, and he was really good, like like, I wouldn't be as nervous when Max Muncy throw the ball. Maybe a little bit nervous, but, like, most of the time, nine times out of ten, he's making that play. So, Max Muncy was good defensively, which I really like. Um, he had his moments because that's who Max Muncy is. He has his moments. He's a streaky player. But Max Muncy would be able, you know, for him to be able to celebrate with the fans as well, uh, a, a 2020 winner, super awesome for Max Muncy. Finish off the infield, we had Will Smith. So, before the season, most fans forget Will Smith signed a 10-year deal to be a Dodger for life. 10-year contract for Will Smith. And Will Smith has been a guy that has struggled on and off. Um, definitely a top 10 catcher, I would like to say. I, I think Will Smith has been pretty good in his career. And this season was good. Uh, he is a catcher. After all, catchers aren't the most prolific hitters. Uh, but there are a couple of good hitting catchers out there. And Will Smith uh, definitely deserves to be in the conversation. So Will Smith... Uh, definitely has that stern attitude, if you will, uh, all about winning and playing baseball, and so I like that. We go to the outfield, and we got to start off on left field. Left fielder Teoscar Hernandez, and, and I was excited when the Dodgers signed Teoscar Hernandez, and wow, what what a dream season for Teoscar! It was a one year deal, and my oh my, after his uh, you know parade celebration his comments at Dodger Stadium today I'm not saying I was against bringing him back I wanted Teoscar back I want Teoscar back but we definitely need to bring Teoscar back at this point that is a player that wants to be a Dodger and will do anything to be a Dodger he is a Dodger at heart and we need more of those players so bring Teoscar Hernandez back he was electric this season at one point he was on pace for 40 home runs he slowed down a bit awesome player awesome person we need to bring Teoscar Hernandez back in 2025 and beyond. Center field, and, and there was a, a kind of jumble in center field, and, and really it was Kike and, and Tom Yedman. And I was talking about Kike because Kike was the missing ingredient back in spring training. I said, we need to bring Kike Hernandez back. He was kind of like the JT from a couple years back. Kike Hernandez was so integral to this team, and, and Kike was a guy that I never wavered on because I know he was an October player, and once again, he showed he was an October player this season. So I, I Kike, bring him back as well. Bring back the entire team. Do not let this championship team break up. They did in 2020. Do not let the 2024 team break up. Bring most of this nucleus back. They can run it back again next year. No doubt about that. Tom Edmond, when we acquired when we acquired him at the deadline, was amazing. Tom Edmond was a, was a balls player, balls player coming over from St. Louis. Tom Edmond, I loved Tom Edmond before he was the Dodger, and I loved him even more as the Dodger. He was amazing. Nobody expected what you know what Tom Edmond did. Not even I. So Tom Edmond, what a player he was. Um, right field of Mookie Betts, and this whole dynasty has started with Mookie Betts. We, we traded for Mookie Betts back in 2020. 
won a ring then, got another one now. This whole dynasty has started because of Mookie Betts, and so Mookie Betts made the uh, decision to sign, you know, long term with the Dodgers, twelve year, three six five, and so far it's paying off. It's paying off in, in numbers so far. Hopefully, we add a lot more rings to that uh, those fingers, Mookie. Uh, let, let's get them both filled up. How about that? So, Mookie Betts happy he's a Los Angeles Dodger. He's a guy I criticize a lot because again, I don't I don't shy away from criticizing nobody. Like, it's never gonna be all sunshine and rainbows. Um, I'm gonna criticize my players because I love this team and, and I'm a heart of my team. Like I, I hear people say, Oh, Allie's laid back. No, it's not. Like, at least for me. For me it's not laid back. Uh I'm I'm hard on my players. Um, I'll let them know if I, I like what I see or don't like what I see. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely on on top of my team and, and, and all that. So Mookie Betts, um, congratulations to Mookie. He, he's been awesome, and he deserves to be in right field. Please keep him in right field, Dodgers. He needs to be in right field. He's a gold glove right fielder. And let's do something cool with Section 50 out there in right field. I mean, number 50 in Section 50 in right field. I, I don't get why we haven't done something cool out there. I don't know. I'm just saying. To do something cool, Dodgers, maybe next season in, in section 50 for Mookie Betts. Now, a lot of pitchers on this team, a lot of players on this team because this team had so many injuries. I think the most lost man games all season long. So the fact that they were able to, you know, come through and, and win a World Series is, is something in itself because they were so injured. And like I said, it, it just shows the Dodgers depth. Uh, and so credit to them, credit to the front office who I, I've called up numerous times. I, I praised them very highly when they signed Shohei. I said I wouldn't talk bad about them. That lasted about six months, you know, halfway to the season, where we saw guys like Kevin Vigio and Johan Ramirez and Nick Ahmed and, and James Altman and just a bunch of guys playing. Andy Posh came up, uh, was on the World Series roster. Kevin Kiermaier on the World Series roster. We traded for him. Um, so a, a bunch of guys played roles. It was tough there. We were fielding Jason Hayward every day. Like, it was tough. Miguel Vargas, it was tough. But here we are now. We are World Series champions. Um, the pitching side of things, it, it starts with Yoshinobu Yamamoto. We signed the $325 million man, the most expensive pitching contract in baseball history. Uh, had, a, had a middle season injury, uh, but was very you know electric in the first half. Came back and looked sharp and, and was pretty good uh, in the postseason and was really good in the World Series. So shout out to Yoshinobu. Uh, hopefully stays healthy going forward and it, it continues to look the way he does because uh, he's going to be pretty good for the Dodgers moving forward. Tyler Glass now was a big fan of Tyler before he came to the Dodgers, bigger fan when he is a Dodger, um, and, and so I'm happy Tyler Glass now is a Dodger. Of course, uh, end of the season hurts, but so hopefully he's okay. There's not been much talk about what it is with him, but hopefully ready for spring training and ready to go in 2025, but he was really good uh, this season. Uh, Jack Flaherty, we traded for Jack Flaherty, and I called him the anchor uh, most of the season, right? When, when the Dodgers acquired Jack Flaherty, he was kind of that anchor to their rotation holding it down when, when guys were in and out of the rotation. Jack Flaherty was there in the second half of the season, just always making his starts, uh, whether they were good, bad, or, or in the middle. Uh, Jack Flaherty was an anchor to that rotation and, and was the integral part of the Dodgers' World Series run. Speaking of integral parts of the Dodgers' World Series run, my, uh, Walker Beeler, my guy, Walker Beeler. Like, he's right there, uh, right in the tippity top corner right there. Talk about big game pitcher. Walker Buehler is the epitome of our big game pitcher, and, and he's our modern day Oral Hershiser, the Bulldog. He is our modern day Bulldog. So you see a lot of similarities and parallels to the '88 team, to the '24 team. You know, our modern day this, modern day that. He is our modern day uh, Oral Hershiser, like literally. Uh, and, and so I'm so happy that Walker Buehler uh, has been a Dodger all these years. My favorite Dodger pitcher as of right now. Um, I'm wearing his jersey here, the road gray. The the road gray that we clinched the World Series in. This is his jersey, number 21, Walker Buehler. So uh, you, you guys have seen this jersey before, but I, I love this jersey. It's Walker Buehler. It, it's it's Walker Buehler. He's the man. Like, he is literally the man. Hopefully he stays a Dodger. I, we need to reach Walker Buehler. I want guys that perform in October because it's all about October here. We know that. I want guys that have come up on the biggest stage, and I had no doubt I never wavered on Walker Buehler at any point in this season ever. I knew that when it comes down to the lights of the Riders, Walker Buehler would show up, and he did. The final of the World Series, love that. And so Walker Buehler, I need Walker Buehler to be a Dodger for life. And we get to the bullpen. Michael Kopech uh, was so electric when he came over. I, I love Michael Kopech. He'll be back next season. I talked about it when we got him. Just going to be so good with the Dodgers coming for the White Sox. 
Um, and, and so many guys in the bullpen that, that contributed all year long. Like Trina was a closer at the end of the season. He was really good all season long. Bullpen was really good for the Dodgers. A really good team that the Dodgers put together this year. What are the haters going to say now? Do you guys need new criticism to drop in the comments? No more 2020 Mickey Mouse. Yes, all the haters out there. What is it going to be now? I, I'm going to guess it's going to be like, oh, you, you bought your team. Oh, Bill and Dollar, you bought your team. Who cares? You bought it. It's it, You spent a billion dollars. Who cares? Does it count? I, I don't care. Like, we'll, we'll keep spending the money, and, and you'll keep watching, and you'll keep watching us win. So, um, Dodgers are World Series champions, and, and so... Yeah, I'm going to celebrate this like all of us Dodger fans are, and I'm looking forward to 2025. I'm most looking forward to the offseason and celebrating this World Series championship. Well, the Dodgers are, once again, World Series champions. Shout out to the whole staff, front office, uh, coaches, all of them. Um, thank you guys if you are watching this video. I don't know if you are or not, but so thank you guys because uh, you guys all make this uh, come true. Dodger baseball, nothing like it. As always, drop a comment down below as my season ending presser here. Um, recap the Dodgers season and, and where they finished at the top. I like these much better. That being said, I'm going to turn off on this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching and go Dodgers.